Target salute guys. Today we are going to study class 6 history chapter 11 buildings, paintings and books. A lot of students find history very boring but if you are aware of our style you will know that we try to make all the subjects really interesting and interactive. So on that note let's go ahead and divide this chapter into 4 broad blocks for your easier understanding. We will study this chapter under metallurgy, buildings, paintings and books and we will start with metallurgy. For those of you who are not aware of what metallurgy actually means, it refers to the scientific study of structures and uses of metals. So if you are studying the structure and uses of metals in a scientific manner, that means you are studying metallurgy. In fact, ancient Indian metallurgists were very capable and advanced. They made major contributions to this field and that is clearly visible when you see the excavations of the Harappan civilization. Harappans were master craftsmen and they had good knowledge of copper metallurgy as well. In fact, they had even managed to manufacture bronze, which is a remarkable thing because bronze is an alloy which is made by mixing copper and tin. So it's really amazing to know that people of that civilization also had this knowledge. And that is why we say that Harappans belong to the Bronze Age. Their successors belong to the Iron Age. That means people who came after them, they had progressed even more and they belong to the Iron Age. When we are talking of iron, you should know that India produced highly advanced varieties of iron. Forged iron, wrought iron, cast iron, all of these were produced in ancient India. Now, so you don't have to mug up things, let's give you a basic idea of what these kinds of irons mean. Under Target English, let me tell you that forged iron is that kind of iron which is carved out of a solid piece of metal. So you take a solid piece of iron and you carve out whatever you want to make out of it and that is forged iron. When we're talking of wrought iron, that is basically an iron alloy that has been heated and then worked with tools to give it the shape that you want. And finally, cast iron, that is made by pouring hot metal, hot molten metal into a mold or the cast of the thing that you want to make and then you'll get cast iron. So you don't have to go too deep in this. This is just to give you a basic idea of these words so you don't have to mug them up. Now that we are already talking about iron, we have to discuss the iron pillar at Mehroli in Delhi. And why is that? Why is it so important? Because it is an excellent example of the skill of the Indian craftsmen. It was made in ancient India and it is absolutely beautiful. It is a 7.2 meters high pillar made of iron, obviously, that weighs over 3 tons and it has an inscription on it. And what does the inscription tell us? It says that this iron pillar was made 1500 years ago by a ruler named Chandra who belonged to the Gupta dynasty. But what is the most amazing fact about this pillar? Guys, the most amazing fact about this pillar is that it has not rusted in all these years. It's common knowledge that iron rusts, right? Anything that is made out of iron rusts very easily. But this pillar was made 1500 years ago and it has not rusted till date. From that you can gauge the skill of the Indian craftsmen in ancient India. With this we move on to the second broad block which is buildings. Under buildings, we are going to study about stoops and temples. When we are talking about the skill of the Indian craftspeople, that was actually visible in every form of art. Whether you are talking about metallurgy, buildings, paintings, books, all of those showcase the skill of those craftspersons. So any buildings that have survived all these years are now testimony to the skill of our craftspersons. Like stoops. Many stoops and temples have survived these years and the word stoop actually means mound. A mound is any small hill or a raised area of the earth and because the design of the stoop is similar to a mound, that is why it was named stoop, which means a mound. There are many kinds of stoops, obviously they have different architectures, but there are some common features which you can see across these architectures. Let's study those common features. The first of these is the relic casket. This is a small box that is placed at the center or the heart of the stoop and it may contain the bodily remains like the teeth, bone or ashes of the Buddha or his followers or things they may have used or precious stones, coins and other valuable things. So all in all, this is a very sacred box and that is why it is placed in the center of the stoop. This box was covered first with earth and then a second coating was done with a layer of mud bricks or baked bricks. So that tells us that it was kept very safely and well preserved. On a similar note, if you see the top dome of a stoop, then sometimes the top dome is also covered with stone slabs. The second important feature is the Pradakshina path. In most stoops, there is a path that is laid around the stoop, which is called the Pradakshina path. This path is usually surrounded with railings and the entrance to the path is through gateways and both railings and gateways are decorated with sculpture. They are very beautifully done. This path was created so devotees can walk around the stoop in a clockwise direction and it is a mark of their devotion. These are two common features of stoops that you will find across stoop architectures. 
and when we talk about some famous stoops in india we have to include the stoop at amravati this was once a magnificent stoop and many of the stone carvings that were used for decoration in this stoop were made about 2000 years ago can you imagine the second important famous stoop is the great sanchi stoop in madhya pradesh an interesting fact about this stoop is that like some other stoops also this was built over centuries that means it took more than 100 years to give it the final shape that it has today the brick mounds that were made in this stoop did back to the time of king ashoka but the railings and the gateways were added during the time of later rulers so the present form of this stoop has come over hundreds of years the second architecture we are going to discuss was of temples some of the earliest hindu temples were also built around this time these temples were of deities like lord shiv lord vishnu and goddess durga just like we were studying the common features of stoops temples also had some common features which you can find across most of the temples these common features are garbhagriha shikhar and mandap just like the relic casket in the stoops the garbhagriha is the most important part of the temple it is a room where the image of the chief deity is placed and the prayers are offered in this room sometimes a tower was built over the garbhagriha to mark that this is the most sacred place of the temple so the shikhar was built on top of the garbhagriha and as you can imagine building shikhars was not easy it required careful planning because it was a long tower that was built over the garbhagriha the third important feature was the mandap most temples have a hall where people can assemble and that place is called the mandap now that we know the features of temples let's move on to construction of temples there were basically three kinds of constructions the first one was rock construction some temples were hollowed out from rocks to make artificial caves so those caves did not exist naturally they were made after hollowing a rock out and these caves were very well decorated with sculptures and paintings the second form of construction is of baked bricks and stones even at that time some temples were made out of baked bricks and stones and a very beautiful example of that is the temple found at bhitargaon in uttar pradesh which was built about 1500 years ago the third type of construction is monolithic temples this i believe is the most gorgeous most remarkable of the lot such temples were carved out of a huge piece of stone and that is why they were called monoliths because mono means single and lith means rock so now i'm sure you're wondering what is the difference between rock construction and monolithic construction a very basic difference in a rock temple a rock was hollowed out to make a cave and the temple was made inside that cave in monolithic temples the stone is itself carved and transformed into a temple so what was a stone or a rock before now is transformed into a beautiful carved sculpted temple similarly when we're talking of differences there's one basic difference between brick style construction and monolithic temple construction the brick structures are built by adding layers of the brick from the bottom upwards if you've ever seen a building construction you would notice that first the base is made and then layers of brick are added on top of the previous layer so they go from the bottom upwards but when they are constructing a monolithic temple the stone cutters had to work from the top downwards they first had to carve the top of the stone and then move towards the base of the stone Moving on to examples of temples to see these temples you can visit the city of Mahabalipuram it has some of the finest stone temples and there are also many monolithic temples in Mahabalipuram similarly Aihole is another town which has some of the finest stone temples the famous Durga temple at Aihole was built 1400 years ago by the Chalukyas now that we know the basics of temples and stoops let's study how were stoops and temples built and for this we'll go through a very simple chart that we've made for you there are obviously several stages in building a stoop or a temple it requires careful planning and they were built usually by kings or queens the first step in this process is finding good quality stone the raw material has to be good right the second step is the place had to be carefully chosen where you have to build the stoop or temple and when you're going logically the third step is obviously what the stone has to be carried from the place it is being quarried the place it is being found to the place of construction so the stone has to be transported to that place of construction the next step is that these rough blocks of stones had to be shaped they had to be given proper shape and pillars wall panels floors ceilings they were all shaped out of this stone and then these had to be precisely placed at the right position and that is how the final construction of the temple or stoop was completed so who built these temples as we've already said kings and queens often paid the crafts persons who worked on building these splendid structures but there were major contributions from devotees as well when devotees came to visit the temple or the stoop they brought gifts with them which were used to decorate these buildings for example one of the gateways at the sachi stoop was paid for by an association of ivory workers so there was this association of ivory workers who paid for one of the beautiful gateways at the sachi stoop 
Other people like merchants, farmers, garland makers, perfumers and hundreds of men and women also paid for decorations. If you visit a temple or a stoop, you would often notice that there are names which are inscribed on the walls or the pillars. So those are the names of people who had contributed towards building or decorating of these temples or stoops. And with this, we've completed part one of this chapter. If you found the lecture interesting and could understand the concepts, please subscribe, like and share this video with your friends. Share with us your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you guys next time with the next part of this lecture. Until then, take care of yourselves and study well. Bye-bye.